Hello Spectrum and welcome to our 2020 Virtual Remembrance Day Assembly. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional lands of the Esquimalt and Songhees Nations, where we live, learn, and do our work. I am Julia Karomi, a grade 12 leadership class student and vice president of your student council. I am Joey Deliba, grade 12 leadership class student and president of your student council. And we are your co-hosts. As a show of respect for the solemnity of this occasion, we ask that hats be removed and that all devices be put on silent mode now. Thank you. Now we ask that you stand as our concert band performs O Canada under the direction of Parker Jolliffe. On November 11th, 1918, guns fell silent and World War I came to an end. Before 1956, Remembrance Day was known as Armistice Day and was first observed in 1919 throughout the British Commonwealth. Remembrance Day in Canada is meant to honor and remember all those who served during times of war and those who continue to serve Canada. The poppy is a symbol of Remembrance Day and shows our honor for the more than 118,000 who made the ultimate sacrifice and for more than 2,300,000 Canadians who have served throughout our nation's history. Our principal, Mr. Bidney, will now make opening remarks on behalf of the Spectrum staff and the Greater Victoria School District. Good afternoon Spectrum. So here we are today to do a very important remembrance of those who fought in the world wars, those who have helped us gain our freedom, uh, those who have allowed us to be here where we are today to enjoy the lives that we have. Um, remembrance Day is an important day for, for myself and my family as my grandfather was a high school teacher and in his life uh, he had many of his students went off to fight in the war in World War II. He used to tell me stories in Ottawa, they have grade 13. He was a grade 13 teacher. He used to tell me stories uh, about a lot of his kids never coming back. Uh, I can never forget those memories and I, I stand here today before you to, to make sure that we all remember all those people that gave their lives. Thank you, Mr. Bidney. Spectrum Video Arts, under the direction of Renee Schwartz, has prepared the following commemoration video. guns find their mark on the east coast of North Korea.
Each year, Spectrum invites a member of the Canadian Armed Forces to share their unique perspective on Remembrance Day and the significance it carries for all of us. This year, we are honoured to hear from Chief Petty Officer Budden. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of your Remembrance Day and your Veterans Week ceremonies. My name is Chief Petty Officer Second Class Stan Budden. I'm a member of the Royal Canadian Navy and the Canadian Armed Forces. My job is a Senior Marine Technician responsible for the operation of warships, propulsion, and other engineering systems. However, I now help to develop the training for all of the new personnel who are joining the Navy. I'd be happy to tell you more about it, as there's truly no life like it. But I'm here today to talk about the tremendous sacrifices of those who served in the military long before me, some of them more than 75 years ago during the Second World War. Maybe some of your great-grandparents served back then, like my grandparents did. Or your parents or other relatives might have served more recently in Afghanistan and as part of the various United Nations missions. I know, it's hard to imagine them being young. But the things that they did when they were not much older than you will just blow you away when you hear about all of their incredible courage. I'm talking about real-life Canadian heroes like Sergeant Ernest Smokey Smith. He was the only soldier to earn Canada's highest military honor, the Victoria Cross for Extreme Bravery, as a private during the Second World War. Smith fought off German tanks and infantry during the Italian campaign in October 1944. After his comrades were wounded and killed, he became a one-man army, driving back 30 German soldiers and destroying a tank. I actually had the honor of being a member of his honor guard when he was buried. Then there was Moe and Harry Hurwitz, two of 13 children from a Montreal Jewish family. When the war broke out, the brothers felt an obligation to volunteer. Moe even turned down a tryout with the Boston Bruins saying, there's no time to play hockey when millions of my brothers are getting killed in Europe. Moe joined the army becoming a member of the Canadian Grenadier Guards, a tank unit, and Harry joined the Navy. After landing in France following D-Day, Mo won the Military Medal and the Distinguished Conduct Medal for his heroism during the Battle of the Scheldt. He single-handedly rushed a German machine gun position, knocking out the enemy resistance and taking 23 prisoners. Mo was killed not long after that. He was 25 years old. Harry got the terrible news while he was in a German prisoner of war camp. He was captured after the sinking of HMCS Athabascan, which had been torpedoed by a German U-boat off the coast of France. Canadian Armed Forces heroes can be found in every generation. Heroes like Captain Nicola Gard, for example. She was only 26 when she lost her life in Afghanistan in 2006 helping create a better future for the people of that country. She was the first female Canadian combat soldier killed in action. She died in a firefight as Taliban forces launched an assault on the city of Kandahar. It's thanks to gutsy people like her, such as these that we live in a strong democratic country that are, guarantees all of our rights and freedoms. Their heroism is the reason that Canadians enjoy a high standard of living and quality of life. 
Not everyone earns a medal in wartime or makes the history books, but every last one of the 1.1 million soldiers, sailors, and aviators who answered a call during the Second World War. 26,000 Canadians engaged in the Korean War, and the 40,000 more forces members who served in Afghanistan have a powerful story to tell. It is as gripping a story as anything you would ever read. It is a story of great uncertainty, fear, and hardships, and it is one of incredible courage. Imagine being in a foreign country where you do not speak the language, hunting down the enemy knowing your foes are also hunting you. Picture yourself, a soldier walking for hours, carrying a heavy backpack, drenched in rain, covered in snow, or sweating during extreme heat. You haven't bathed in weeks or eaten a meal that hasn't come out of a can. At night, you dig a deep hole in the ground, a foxhole, to catch a few hours of sleep, usually interrupted by a, du a duty watch, an artillery bombardment, or an enemy attack. Or you're a sailor. Feel the freezing winds and the salt spray of the North Atlantic as you stand watch for enemy submarines and airplanes trying to break the vital shipping supply lines on which the Allies rely. You may be in knee-deep water that has flooded the lower decks of your ship and you haven't seen land for weeks. Now you're an aviator in the Air Force, flying through fog, clouds and rain, in the dark of night, without the benefit of radar. Enemy artillery shells rock your plane and test your courage. You don't know whether you'll make it back to the airfield or crash into enemy territory, but you'll have to carry on to drop bombs onto your target. Veteran stories cover the spectrum from invigorating victories to demoralizing defeats, but they all carry a, sh a common theme, military members' determination to fight for freedom and for peace despite the hardships and personal sacrifices, because that's what true heroes do. Can you ever imagine being at war, wondering whether you'll ever get to see home again, whether you'll ever hug your parents again, or whether you'll ever grow old? 45,000 Canadians who served in the Second World War didn't get that chance. They never returned from the battle. Neither did the more than 500 Canadians who lost their lives in the Korean War, and 158 Canadians who did not come back from Afghanistan. Another 164 Canadian Armed Forces peacekeepers has been killed while pro protecting vulnerable populations in unstable and dangerous regions during the United Nations missions. Canada has been a leader in keeping the peace around the world sending more than 100,000 forces members to participate in over 66 missions around this world. Peacekeepers must be both trained for both war and peace, as they are often caught in the middle of warring factions on both sides. Tragically, they sometimes get caught in the conflict. Even survivors can carry battle scars that last a lifetime. Many of these scars are visible but many others are invisible. Haunting memories of their experiences may leave veterans with long-term mental and emotional wounds, what we often call post-traumatic stress disorder. So how can we begin to thank our veterans for their mind-boggling bravery? Young heroes who stepped up when duty called and put their line, lives on the line for our freedoms? That's something we must never forget. Of course, military action is not confined to foreign soil. Neither is it limited in the past. Today's Canadian Armed Forces members continue to risk our own health and safety to protect others. The enemy may be different, but our duty to defend Canadians remains the same. For instance, the Canadian Forces medical personnel and support staff were deployed to long-term care homes across Canada this year to support the fight against COVID-19. Military personnel have also tackled devastating floods, massive forest fires, and major snowstorms in provinces from coast to coast to coast. 
Others carry out life-saving search and rescue missions by air and by sea. Crews responded to over 1,000 calls a year. I have personally served around the world in my 28 years in the Canadian Armed Forces, in faraway places such as the Arabian Sea and off the coast of Africa, in the Caribbean and other areas of the world. I have sacrificed a lot to serve Canada. I have also lost a lot of friends, including my dear friend, Sergeant Donald Lucas, who died in Afghanistan three days after I returned to Canada in 2007. The hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life is attend his funeral and try to explain to his three-year-old son that daddy was never coming home again. No matter where we're needed, in Canada or around the globe, dedicated Canadian Armed Forces members are always ready to help. We can be counted on to keep Canadians and our country safe, just as our veterans did. That's the link that ties today's military members to those who came before us. We are all part of the Canadian family, and we are all in this together. So, you can see why we hold Remembrance Day and Veterans Week ceremonies every year. It's important that we never forget the high price of our veterans paid for the peace and prosperity that we enjoy. Canadians have a lot to be thankful for. Let's give sincere thanks to the many great sacrifices of Canadian, Canada's veterans past and present, protecting our people, defending our freedoms, and safeguarding the values that define and unite us as Canadians. Thank you. Thank you for your insight, Chief Petty Officer Rodden. We will now hear the wartime poem, I Have a Rendezvous with Death by Alan Seeger, read by Lily Ooms. I have a rendezvous with death at some disputed barricade. When spring comes back with rustling shade and apple blossoms fill the air, I have a rendezvous with death when spring brings back blue days and fair. It may be he shall take my hand and lead me into his dark land and close my eyes and quench my breath. It may be I shall pass him still. I have a rendezvous with death on some scarred slope of battered hill. When spring comes round again this year and the first meadow flowers appear, God knows twere better to be deep, pillowed in silk and scented down, where love throbs out in blissful sleep pulse nigh to pulse and breath to breath, where hushed awakenings are dear. But I've a rendezvous with death at midnight in some flaming town. When spring trips north again this year, and I to my pledged word am true, I shall not fail that rendezvous. Leah Shannon and her advanced dancers have gone outside of class time to prepare their performance entitled Mad World. Feel the way that every child should 
which I'm dying are the best I've ever had. Find it hard to tell you, I find it hard to take. When people run in circles, it's a very, very mad world. Mad world. Mad world. Mad It is now time to observe two minutes of silence. As a show of further respect, we ask that you stand now in your classroom and turn off your lights. The last post will be played, followed by two minutes of silence, marking the peace when the guns of war were put to quiet and allowing us to share a few moments in remembrance. This will be followed by Reve which symbolizes the transition between the soldier's earthly duty of dying and being called to leave the mortal realm behind.
You may be seated. Mr. Bidney will now make a closing statement. Okay, so here we are now um, at the, uh, the end of our Remembrance Day um, ceremony and I would just like to acknowledge all the work and the time and effort that went into making today possible. Thank you to the staff and students. Um, this truly is uh, um, a time in our lives where we are becoming more resilient day by day. Uh, this proves that we can still honour those important things in our lives to make sure that we don't forget. So everyone, please take care. Thank you. This concludes our Remembrance Day ceremony. Thank you for your time, your respect, and the shared honor that we all carry forward. Thanks again, and if you have a chance tomorrow or anytime, thank someone who has served or still serves to make the world a better place in their way.